Hey guys, Smite Meta update. I know I said I'd post one last week, but some things got in the way, and also we were just about to have a patch, so I didn't think it was worth it. I traveled back home, or back up here, where my computer is, and whatnot. Sorry if I sound weird, or there's random cuts in between. I'm decently sick right now, my throat is kind of killing me, but I want to get this out for you guys. So, um, in terms of events that happened, the SEC qualifiers and the SPL kickoff land have concluded at this point at least the kickoff land might be still alive i'm not sure i started recording my mages tips and tricks which you should check out during the middle of that so in terms of the adc meta nothing really has shifted that much except for the introduction of uler um uler looked really good at the past land the spl kickoff land um he is very dominant with his hydras build the one with all the maces and hydras Aside from Uller, Izanami's kind of fallen off of her pedestal as the best ADC in the game, and now Medusa is very, very strong, and she sits at the top. Her pressure, her damage, her wave clear, her mid, late, early game, all really, really strong. She just is powerful right now. The current meta build is the same Crusher Aussie as, as it's been for a while now. But yeah, Medusa sits on top. With her, Ho Yi, Charybdis, Kernanos, Izanami's still decent, but she's not amazing. Uh, she's not like the end-all, be-all of ADCs. So nothing really has changed much other than the introduction of Uller for ADCs. Um, moving on to supports, Fenrir no longer sits at the top. The nerf to his ultimate hit him harder than I thought it would, and the brutalized buff, uh, strangely enough, has not brought him back into support, which I thought it would. He's still decent, but he's not the best anymore. He's not the end-all, be-all of supports. So Ket's support was what I thought would be effectively gutted, but she still does okay. She's not terrible, um, but she's much better in jungle now, which is what they were going for. Um, which leaves the best support spot to go over to Kabraken. Kabraken has high wave pressure, high damage, good lockdown, really good CC, and he's just a powerhouse. Kabraken looked really strong this weekend. He flexes to three rolls. And he's overall everything you're looking for in a support right now. Atlas. It's really good this weekend. Um, Atlas has good CC. Decent damage. His ultimate's very, very strong. And he is just overall a really good support. Um, yeah, I have my gripes with Atlas. Uh, as a design wise, but right now he's pretty powerful in the support role. Bacchus is still really strong, especially as a counter to Atlas. Um, Bacchus is really good to engage, very high damage. She, he's difficult to kill. Um, with him, we also saw a bit of Kuzumbo this weekend, although I don't really agree with it. Um, Ganesha is very, very strong right now, and so is Ares. Ares is tearing up ranked games right now. Because he can four speeds, he's high damage, and he can snowball really, really hard. If you're a support player and don't have Ares in your pool, you should definitely pick him up. He's one of those supports that could straight up just hard carry a game. So with that, we'll move to mid lane. Uh, the mid lane pool is relatively the same. Thoth is still really good. I don't think he's the best mage in the game by like a mile now. But Thoth, Persephone, both really, really strong right now. High burst damage. Really good, well, secure on Thoughts End, and then Lockdown for Persephone. Persephone is a CC immune ult and a leap. Thoth can be very far away. Agni still very strong with Artillery Secure, Damage, CC, all of that stuff. Zeus is still going the defensive build. Um, and he's still wrecking house with it. Baba Yaga saw a lot of play, specifically by Sop's time in the STC qualifiers, and she looked incredible. Um, she has high damage. She went the more tankier route that Zeus does, and she tore it up. She did really, really well. She might be somebody to watch. Also, um, Tiamat is super strong still. Always, she's going to be super strong until there's some sort of change with her. And the Hebo change, I would avoid playing him in mid. I would put him in the jungle, if anything. Um... In mid lane, he can't really get close to his lane opponent enough at a high enough level. Like, he can't get close enough to get the solo kills he wants to get. So, be be wary. Regarding the jungle, 
Sarket is back in the jungle as her main role, and she looks very, very strong. Uh, Kalina looks absolutely disgusting. Uh, Bastet does an absurd damage. Nemesis looks absolutely disgusting. Um, Susano, absolutely disgusting. Kali's still super strong for carrying games. Hunbats hasn't looked bad. The jungle pool is actually pretty big. But I think the most important one to point out is Daji. Uh, this weekend, Daji, or not this weekend, but in the SEC qualifiers, Daji was a very contested pick, and she showed why. Daji's a lot of presence, really good CC immunity, and taking herself out of the fight. She forces beads really easily, and her damage is very, very high. The builds favor her a lot right now. So if you're a jungler and you're looking to pick up your next a new character, definitely think about picking up Daji. She is a powerhouse right now. And we'll finish up with the solo laners. Ardeo is still the end-all, be-all best in solo right now. Um, she has high pressure, high damage. The only thing she lacks really is CC immunity, which you can get with beads. She's lane pressure, high damage. She is decent secure on her blue buff. She could defend herself. She's really good 2v1. She's very difficult to kill late game. She's good at diving carries. Kabraken, also a very powerful in, um, in solo right now. I just realized I'm an idiot. And forgot to mention, in jungle, Gilgamesh is fucking crazy right now. There's no other way to put it. Uh, he can build essentially full tank with like one or two damage items and still feel like he's doing a bajillion damage. Um, it is He is almost impossible to deal with, um, with how good he is. He is Erlang Shen, but better. He is CC, he has high damage, he has good lockdown, good chase down, very good power spikes. He is super strong. Erling Shen's decent in jungle right now. He's got very high burst, good lockdown, decently strong. But Gilgamesh is just a step up, I think. Anyway, back to solo lane. Kabraken, like I said, super strong right now. Because of his, the solo lane items right now, warriors don't really have much to go into outside of, uh, like, once they nerfed Blackthorn and they nerfed Berserker Shield, or they changed Berserker Shield, it's difficult for warriors to itemize into a super power item. I think Berserker Shield is a bit underrated. Some people are calling it absolute garbage and whatnot, but I'm not sure about that. I think it's half decent. I think it's decent for assassins and for warriors, but that remains to be seen. Um, but Kabraken and Ardeo are probably your best two uh, soul laners right now. That, and then you also have the new god, Shiva. Shiva being entered into ranked has uh, come with the mix. Some people don't think he's good at all, and everybody thinks, or not everybody, but some people think he is a must ban every game, and then some people think he's okay. His solo lane presence is very strong. His instant CC is very, very strong, and his nine seconds of potential CC immunity is very, very strong. This character is annoying, and he does exactly what you want a warrior to do. Disrupt, deal damage, and then just live. His ult is versatile, and his abilities are just very strong. Wukong has also made somewhat of a resurgence with the Soul Eater and more damage builds coming around. He's doing very, very well. Again, Bologna and Ama are still decently strong. Same with Osiris and Erlang Shen, but it is shifting away from them. One more pick this weekend. Cleo in Soul Lane looked very dominant. She looked incredibly dominant. Wow. Dominant. And she is building hybridy. Uh, she's starting with Soul Eater, and she's just sustaining a lot. Her objective damage is crazy. Her lane pressure is really good. She is definitely a pick you should start picking if she's not banned. She's usually banned in games, but you should definitely start picking her up in Soul Lane. Uh, she is a powerhouse. Kamazots, and surprisingly enough, this weekend we saw a lot of Nemesis solo. Um, now, I don't know if this is a fluke or something that they actually think is good, the pros, but I was talking about this when the season started. Nemesis feels decent in Soul Lane right now with the Death's Toll, Zerkers, those items. Um, she feels good. And while she's not the best, she's definitely not the worst. You can definitely think about picking her up and trying her yourself, although it is a more comfort thing than anything else. Otherwise, that's the Smite meta update. Thanks, guys. Peace.